Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, the bit you channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Libertarian Party and John McAfee. This is still of interest to other parties, I think, as I think you'll see that as I go along, so I would urge you to not click or swipe away. Being a small l libertarian, the Libertarian Party has never exactly represented my views. I won't go into why here because I've already done it in my video, the Zero Aggression Principle, for which there is a link to below. However, until fairly recently, I would vote Libertarian if there was a Libertarian Party option on the ballot. In fact, in 2002, I ran for the position of South Dakota Commissioner of School and Public Lands on the Libertarian ticket. This was entirely a paper campaign made at the request of the South Dakota Liber Libertarian Party so that they could retain ballot access. I might, and I stress might, might have run for Senate in 2004 had not personal issues made it really problematic. Now, I know that it would have lost. However, I had a strategy. If I was going to lose, why not lose by taking the one voting block that no one gives two fracks about, the Native American vote? And to that end, I started learning the Lakota language so as to prepare for stumping solely in South Dakota's Indian reservations. Here is a tip for the South Dakota Libertarian Party, although why I'm giving a tip remains something of a mystery, as you'll see in a moment, but you're going to lose. Why not lose by completely taking the Native American vote? You can do it. Learn Lakota and never leave the res. Make your main offices on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, the number one slum in America, and don't leave except to go to other reservations. However, on the national level, I have been watching the Libertarian Party slide into complete buffoonery. I and mean, there's always been some fringe nuts. In 2016, the LP's crazyometer pegged the needle and then broke completely. In 2016, the Libertarian Party actually considered John McAfee as a presidential candidate, and he got 14% of the delegates' votes. 14 zarking percent. The bullet was dodged, sort of. Instead of McAfee, or the far more principled Austin Peters, they went with Gary Johnson, a closet Republican who sabotaged both his own campaign and the Libertarian Party by telling people they should vote for Hillary. When John McAfee got 14% of the vote, the Libertarian Party lost me. There's now no party that even remotely re represents my views. I cannot recommend the Libertarian Party anymore because their crazyometer is so completely broken that it needs a total overhaul. So let me spell this out for you. And this is probably of interest to other parties because other parties have the same problem. Your crazyometers are broken. In a sane world, Neither a massive narcissist like Donald Trump nor a massive sociopath like Hillary would ever have made it past their primaries. Everybody's crazyometer is broken, but nowhere is this more evident than with the Libertarian Party at the federal level. Generally, I should say, generally, the state, local parties, they've got their acts together. Although, obviously, Someone in some states voted for McAfee, so that probably tells you something about those particular states. The problem is this. John McAfee is a certifiable paranoid schizophrenic, complete with hallucinations. Yes, hallucinations. He genuinely sees things that are not there. I spent 40 years in IT, much of which overlapped McAfee's appearance in that field, including dealing with the antivirus software that still bears his name, though he's had nothing to do with it for a decade or two now. I have certainly followed McAfee's career throughout my own. And it became very clear very quickly that while he does have lucid periods that can last as long as a couple of years, generally less, they're followed by lengthy periods of full-blown paranoid schizophrenia that last five years or more. In 2012, we learned how this came about. Wired Magazine interviewed McAfee during one of his paranoid schizophrenic episodes. I invite you to read this whole article. It is an amazing look into the mind of a true paranoid schizophrenic complete with hallucinations, and there are links to that below. McAfee mentioned after he went to work in 1969 for the Missouri Pacific Railroad, 
using, by the way, a fake resume, he was working to optimize train schedules. And I will just read the article here as it was written. After six months, McAfee uh, began to churn out optimized train routing patterns. Unfortunately, he also discovered LSD. He would drop acid in the morning, go to work, and route trains all day. One morning, he decided to experiment with another psychedelic drug called DMT. He did a line, he felt nothing, and decided to snort a whole bag of the orangish powder. Quote, within an hour, my mind was shattered, he said. People asked him questions, but he didn't understand what they were at saying. The computer was spitting out train schedules to the moon. He couldn't make sense of it. He ended up behind a garbage can in downtown St. Louis hearing voices and desperately hoping that nobody would look at him. He never went back to Missouri Pacific. Part of him still believes that he's on that trip, that everything since has been one giant hallucination, and he'll find himself someday snapped out of it back on his couch in St. Louis listening to Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. And Mike dropped. John McAfee overdosed on DMT and became permanently brain damaged. Specifically, he became a genuine, certifiable, honest-to-God, paranoid schizophrenic, complete with hallucinations. I strongly recommend that you read the Wired article. It tells you a lot more about McAfee. His paranoia, his schizophrenia, complete with hallucinations, and all of his insane antics around that period of time. The Libertarian Party even considering him or any delegates voting for him was bad enough, but now he has doubled down on the crazy. McAfee is currently in one of his paranoid schizophrenic episodes. He, McAfee has fled the United States, something he does with some frequency, for Cuba in order to avoid prosecution for tax evasion. McAfee plans to seek the Libertarian Party nomination for president by running in absentia, that is, without ever stepping foot in the United States, by using thousands of volunteers wearing masks, depicting his face, campaigning for him back home and abroad. Libertarians, for the love of all that's holy, do not fall into the trap of supporting him. Because, it, you know, don't do it just because you like some of his positions, okay? McAfee hasn't paid income tax for eight years and is in Cuba to avoid prosecution. Now, he said he did this for ideological reasons, and that may be true. It is also attractive to libertarians since we believe that taxation is theft. But that doesn't mean that McAfee is sane. Read the Wired article, man. McAfee likes guns. Libertarians are big on the Second Amendment. But that doesn't mean McAfee is sane. Read the damned Wired article and see what use he put those guns to. McAfee thinks prostitution should be legal. Now, libertarians are big on decriminalizing victimless, victimless crimes, but that, that doesn't mean that McAfee's sane. Read the damned Wired article and see how he likes young girls. In fact, you'll note that he was keeping a 17-year-old hooker as a girlfriend. She apparently didn't feel the same way as she tried to murder McAfee in his sleep for his money. And the only reason that she failed to kill him is because she missed. McAfee kept her around. Yes, you heard me right. A 17-year-old hooker, hooker tried to murder McAfee in his sleep, and he didn't do the same thing, which would be immediately show her to the curb. He kept her around for months afterwards. That right there should tell you everything. John McAfee is insane. Now, McAfee also likes to buck the legal system, his most recent being his escape to Cuba in order to avoid prosecution. But again, read the Wired article, and you'll see this as a consistent pattern throughout his life. You see the most glaring example of this in his fleeing his Belize mansion, probably from the description, something more like a small armed compound, complete with more private security than existed in the police forts of his local town. But McAfee fled Belize when Belizean police wanted to question him in connection with the murder of his neighbor. And once you know the facts, you cannot escape the conclusion that McAfee probably murdered his neighbor. You'll also see the hallucinogenic side of his issue. Um, 
he spent an entire night naked in the bushes near his house, hallucinating police, wandering around his property, staring silently at him in the bushes. Libertarians like people who buck the system. But come on, man, let's get real. He was hallucinating. Read the damn wire article, he was hallucinating. John McAfee is clearly and obviously insane. Now McAfee wants to run for the Libertarian Party nomination for president by running in absentia and using thousands of volunteers wearing masks, depicting his face campaigning for him. That's insane. This does not advance the cause of individual liberty, which is what I talk about on Tales from Israel Ranch. In fact, it makes my life harder because I have to overcome the image that libertarians are complete nuts. By even considering, McAfee, you are making things harder for me, you complete frackwits. And this certainly doesn't make the Libertarian Party look legitimate, in fact, exactly the reverse. Now imagine you're Joe Average. You come home from a hard day's work, you crack open a beer, kick back, and start flipping channels. And C-SPAN is covering the Libertarian National Convention, which it does. And you say to yourself, self, I've heard about these guys before. The Democrats and Republicans kind of suck right now. Maybe I should have a look. And then in short order, you see doofuses in John McAfee masks running around and people actually voting for a crazy man. You're going to say to yourself, self, this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. What a bunch of loons. And then you're going to change the channel and never give another thought to the Libertarian Party except to joke about it with your friends. John McAfee is insane. He is a certifiable paranoid schizophrenic complete with hallucinations. He overdosed on a psychotropic substance in 1969 that left him permanently brain damaged. If the Libertarian Party even considers him or allows clowns wearing masks of him anywhere near the convention floor, then you are throwing away every last shred of legitimacy that you may have had left. Not to mention, you are making my life harder on Tales from SYO Ranch. And in fact, I probably have to stop calling myself a libertarian so as to avoid association with the Libertarian Party. John McAfee is insane. Entertain his antics at your own risk. Idiots. And that's all that I have to say about that for today. So thanks for watching. I would certainly love to keep the conversation going, so please feel free to leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I would certainly appreciate your support, either via my PayPal tip jar, my subscribe star, or a place on my website where you can support me further. And there are links to all of these in my description box below. So that's all the time that we have today for this episode of the highly acclaimed, world-renowned Tales from SYL Ranch, the BitChute channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.